Okay, so the, my presentation, add-ons, lessons learned. Welcome, everybody. My name is Joris Arts from Clickworks. We are a platinum partner based in Antwerp, Belgium. We are a team of, I think, 12 people now, uh, and there are a lot of us now in this presentation as well. So welcome. Uh, lessons learned, little disclaimer uh, first. This is not a uh, basic introduction session to add-ons. This is not an advanced session on all the in uh, all the difficult things with object UUIDs and so on. This is just a compilation of things that has, uh, have cost me a lot of time to figure out. And I want to share that with you so that you can uh, win some time if you are uh, looking into uh, add-ons. Um, so that said, we brought three add-ons now to Marketplace. One free add-on, easy container, which is very very simple, uh, easy draw, and then just recently easy translate. So we have a little bit of experience with uh, add-ons and bringing add-ons to uh, the Claris uh, marketplace. If you want the complete guide, there's an excellent guide on the Geist Interactive uh, website. Uh, so everything is explained there. So this is not an, a session on how to create add-ons. I have eight lessons for you and it takes exactly 30 minutes. So Chris, uh, I hope you don't mind that I borrow 10 minutes of your scheduled uh, time. Feel free. Um, but this will not be an interactive session. So I just go on for 30 minutes and then I hope to get some responses in the chat and then we can eventually organize a follow-up uh, in true .mmp uh, style, okay? Right, lesson number one, plugins. If you want to use a plugin in your add-on, like we do with Easy Translate, we use the free base elements plugin, uh, and we provide a script to install that plugin if it's not there. But then there's a little issue because you can't simply uh, reference the plugin functions as you will do in your scripts and your calculations. Because after installation of the add-on, these will all convert to function missings because the plugin is not installed at the moment the add-on is installed. So it took a little while to figure that out, but the solution is actually very simple. Just use evaluate and hard code plugin function names, and this will work even after installing uh, the plugin. So that is the first lesson. Lesson number two, record, record data. If you want tables, to contain records after installing the add-on, like the sample add-ons from FileMaker, they contain uh, sample data. And for instance, our Easy Translate has like a, a pre-compiled list of 60 languages that are translatable with uh, uh, Google Translate. Well, the first times I, I tried it, I always got this result. After installation of the add-on, I had an empty language table and it, took me a while to figure out what happened. And uh, at the end, it turned out that it was this little validation option that we normally don't often use, but actually in this language table, it was set to on, it was set to always validate. And if you do that in combination with an add-on, the end result is that the table is installed, but the records are not imported uh, in that table after installation. So the solution to that is to use only this validation option, only during data entry. And that was the only way that I could have my data transferred over when adding the add-on to the target database. Then lesson number three, portals. This one will take a little while. What if you want to have a draggable portal that you can add to the target database. So I have a little animation of easy container. So you drag the object on the layout and it immediately works. So it immediately creates a portal that links itself to the target table on which the layout uh, is based. There are quite a few things um, to take care of. So the end result is this, is a table that is added, the easy container table, the table occurrence and a relationship that is created between the primary key of the target table and the foreign key of uh, your own add-on table. So the setup is like this. You create the layout, you create a portal as you would normally do a FineMaker. And then there are like some special things you need to take care of. 
Uh, again, this is all very well described in the uh, guide on Geist Interactive. Um, but just a, a quick recap of some of these things. So first, you need to have a layout with a very layout with a very specific name, uh, add-on template directives. That means this layout will not be added to the solution when installing the add-on. This layout is only there to hold your group of objects. If you want a draggable group of objects, then you need to create a layout with this specific name. Then the second thing that I learned is that after creating all the objects, the portal, et cetera, you actually need a dummy table. You can't create a portal in FindMaker without actually pointing to a table and a table occurrence. But after the portal has been created, you can remove the table and the table occurrence from your solution and the portal will still stay there. So you don't need to carry that over uh, with your add-on. And so this lowers the footprint of your add-on after installation. You can just remove the temporary table you use to create your portal and it still everything works fine. So yeah, that was something curious. I learned that you can actually have a layout that is not based on a table uh, occurrence in, in FindMaker. If you want the dynamic relationship to be created, you need to put the foreign key field from your table onto that layout and it needs to uh, have a very specific name in this case add-on dynamic relation and so on. now this is all not new then another lesson i learned you can only have one object group you cannot have nested subgroups or multiple object groups on this layout this will not work well so only one object group in this case of course my container and all the objects within it, okay? Objects that are not in this one object group are not carried over with the add-on. So this is very handy. We have this file on our server and the install add-on button is not carried over. So we can just use it to create a new add-on from our solution that sits on the server, okay? Yeah, this is a little more advanced stuff, but not too much about that in this presentation. Uh, I wanted to keep it short. If you need specific object names, so if you want your scripts to refer to a specific instance of your add-on, because this portal, of course, can be added multiple times to the same layout. So if you want your scripts to point to the right, uh, the right one, then you can add UUIDs and you need this little piece of special code to uniquely uh, name uh, the objects in this instance of your atom. And that's about it. This is what happens if you have multiple groups on your special uh, object layout. So you see, I have, I had a, a nested subgroup. Uh, the three fields you see there, um, actually this is the end result after adding the add-on to the target solution. And you see these fields are duplicated. And the only reason is that I had a second group within the main object group. So this does not work at all. Uh, still about uh, portals and draggable objects, I learned the difference between adding the add-on to the solution and dragging the objects onto the, the layout. These are two different things. And it took me a while because, uh, before I, I, I had this concept. Uh, so the first is adding the add-on, meaning you go to layout mode, you go to the add-ons uh, pane, and then you click the little plus sign. And then already a lot of stuff is happening. Your tables are already created, your table occurrences are already added, your layouts are created, but the relationship is not yet created. That's what you see on the right side of the screen. So summary of that. Just clicking the plus sign, adding an add-on to a solution already copies over tables, table occurrences, data, so records, layouts, teams, scripts, custom functions, and uh, custom menus. And then the second step is dropping the add-on onto the layout, which by the way is not mandatory. You can perfectly create an add-on without requiring uh, the user to add a group of objects to a layout. This is how Dayback Calendar works, uh, for instance. You just add the add-on and they back sits in your solution and there's no, no, nothing to, to, to do any further. But if you want, for instance, a portal on the layout, then you can drag the add-on icon onto the layout. And at that moment, the dynamic relationship is created. 
because it is of course only at that moment that your add-on knows to which primary key your foreign key needs to be uh, tied. And FileMaker actually does a quite uh, a good job to determine what the primary key is in the, in the target uh, table. There are a set of rules uh, about it, but it works very well. So what happens when you drop the add-on objects onto a layout? Layout objects are created and relationships are created. But it took me a while to figure out that there was a difference actually between adding the add-on and dropping the add-on. Oh, by the way, relationship settings are always come with the two options, allow creation of records and delete related records. I did not find a way or not any documentation about uh, how to change these options. So the dynamic relationships always come with these two options uh, activated in my experience. Lesson number four, we're almost halfway there. And I think I'm still on time. Artwork, if you don't do anything and you just create the add-on from FileMaker, what happens? Your add-on will have the same icon as specified in the file options of your file. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but there will not be any uh, category assigned to it or any description text or something. So it looks a little bit uh, ugly uh, like that, but uh, you can change that. So you can create your own icons, just follow the same settings for resolution and dimension as the default FileMaker icons do and you're fine. So there's a, a default resolution and a higher resolution and you can have a preview image. And you can also modify the JSON files and even localize them. And I think Camelcase David has a session tomorrow about localizing add-ons. So I um, look forward to to that presentation as well. Uh, so you can localize the text, title, description, category, features, uh, and so on. And the end result is this, a nice little icon, a category name, a description, and a preview uh, image. Lesson number five, add-on five. There's actually two things that happen when you create an add-on, when you use the install as add-on or save a copy as add-on script step, sorry. Uh, you get two things. You get a folder with these JSON files that I just mentioned and these icon files, and then the XML files containing the actual FileMaker uh, structures. But at the same time, you always get a, a file called Evim add-on, which has a plugin icon. And the nice thing about that one is you can double click it and it will install your add-on in the right location on Mac or on Windows which is a very good thing but because the first support question we always get with our add-ons uh, from users is where do I put this damn thing? And I always need to point them to the right folders in library or uh, yeah, uh, what is it on Windows, uh, these special folders. So that's the advantage of the Evim add-on file. But the problem is uh, up to today, there is no way to put your custom icons in this file. There's a checksum on this file and one, uh, once you start tampering with, uh, with it, it doesn't work anymore. So you cannot have your own custom icons, your own custom text in these add-on files. So apparently this is still in development, uh, but not really ready for production. So right now we distribute our add-ons as folders, what you see on the left side as a, as a zip file and users need to put them uh, manually in the right uh, location, but actually good things are coming in next uh, versions. Lesson number six, existing objects. Um, what happens if um, you have an object in your add-on or a table or a layout with a, with a specific name and your target solution also has objects with the same name? So I did a little test and what I did was the following. I created two FileMaker databases from scratch, so independently from one another. I created one file that I called add-on source with one table called test, one layout, uh, one table occurrence, one custom function, and one script. And then again, from scratch, I created a second file that I called add-on target with exactly the same things. One table, one layout, one script, one custom function. Now, what happens 
if you make an add-on from the add-on source file and you add that to the add-on target files, everything has the same name. Well, first layouts as expected. Your add-on layout is added and renamed test two. Great. Tables, same thing. We get a second table. It is dynamically renamed and records are imported in the correct table. So there's one record that comes with uh, the add-on. Scripts, same thing. You get a second script dynamically renamed, but then you see the issue. I have one custom function called test in my target solution and in my add-on as well. And this custom function is not created dynamically. Instead, my script test two now refers to the custom function that was already there in the target solution. And the issue with that is what I discovered that FileMaker does not check the contents of the custom function. So as you can see on the right, my source custom function has a different outcome than the target custom function. The FileMaker uh, doesn't care. So I have now an add-on that sits in the target system that refers to a custom function that does something completely different than what I intended as the add-on developer. So I can see advantages in this system in by meaning of uh, reusing certain source code or something and having the same custom functions across multiple add-ons, but I also see the danger of that. You need to very well take care of how you name your custom functions and uh, make a good attempt to make these names unique if you don't want to mess with or to deal with uh, a known custom function that sit already in the target solution. Uh, so I took a look at, um, oh yeah. yeah, I'm going to skip this. I took a look at how, for instance, the uh, FileMaker standard add-ons handle this issue. For instance, the rich text editor that comes uh, standard with FileMaker 19. And the way they solve this is just by kind of namespacing their custom function name. So they put the name of the add-on before the custom function. Name. And so that is what I now did with all our uh, add-ons as well. I put the name of the add-on before the actual custom function name to avoid uh, interfering with existing custom functions in the target. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, one suggestion, uh, one idea may be to add a version number to your custom function names. Um, and then you could uh, update your uh, plugin to version two of the custom functions, and then they would be added. And so, so long as you always only have exactly one um, uh, contents for a particular function name, then you can uh, develop what you want. Yeah. I tried to use this UUID system in uh, custom function names, but this is, is not possible. So, yeah, you need to to find a workaround and, and, and find the system to make your custom function names unique. Um, then going back to the previous slide, what happens if you uninstall an add-on and what happens to this custom function then? Well, the good news is FileMaker keeps an internal reference count. So if you uninstall the add-on, your extra table layouts and scripts are removed as expected. And the custom function that was already there and was being reused in your second script stays in the target solution. So it is not, uh, removed as well. So apparently there is like a reference counter uh, there. So that's the good news. Okay, uh, lesson number seven, Clarice Marketplace. If you want to submit an add-on uh, for Clarice Marketplace, you need a partner subscription. So it's via the partner dashboard that you can go to the Marketplace dashboard and then submit an add-on for Marketplace, you need a product page on your website. So you need to provide a link to a page dedicated to that add-on on your website. You need a short video explaining how the add-on works. You need some artwork like uh, screenshots, uh, an icon, a preview image, uh, some copies, so a text, description texts, uh, categories, and so on. And a full access FileMaker 5 for review by FileMaker Incorporated. So the marketplace is being supervised by FileMaker. And I think that's actually a good thing because add-ons could potentially contain 
a malicious code or code that steals uh, data. So I actually think it's a good it's a good thing that there's at least some uh, ad admitting or, or approval uh, process uh, going on for add-ons. Uh, let me know what, what you think about that maybe in, in, in the comments. Um, because I know Ryan Dunning recently this week is now starting an open source add-ons uh, library and I sent him an email just to discuss the topic of uh, security. Um, be advised. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> test, test, and test your uh, solution again. Um, we have an add-on that we used for ourselves like for several years in production. And while preparing the add-on, I still uh, was able to iron out like uh, certain bugs that had to do with very specific uh, context issues. Uh, expect a lot of support questions. Uh, so the first one that downloaded our first add-on already uh, replied the same day with the feature request for like something else. Um, so it's funny, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's very interesting to talk with people from all over the world that are using your, your add-ons, but expect a lot of questions, uh, feature requests, and it, it puts, a, puts in motion a whole new dynamic of like, uh, yeah, creating, maintaining, and then um, continuing developing on, on the add-on, but it's fun. It takes a lot of time though. And then finally, this is the end of this presentation. I think, yeah, I'm still on time. Um, how have add-ons transformed the way we work at ClickWorks? Um, we had to rethink our way of working because before add-ons, we, I think like most of you had like a, a kind of starter file, we called it a library file or yeah, you can see it as a template file. So we never start new projects from scratch, but we have like this, this starter file, okay? And it, it tended to be fairly fat. Uh, there was a lot in it. Uh, like for instance, easy translate was incorporated in that starter file in case we needed a localization uh, in our solution. Um, and it, it, was, it was a bit, yeah, hard to work with, frustrating, because every new project, even the smallest projects, we wanted to start with this library, but then we needed to throw a lot of stuff out that we didn't need, and so on. So we discussed that in our team, and it was a, a tough discussion, because it's the balance between having a framework and having uh, a parachute and, and a system of error handling. By the way, my colleague Jan Zelenka will, will be doing a session on our error handling tomorrow and, and you will maybe understand what it means to let that loose. But finally, we decided to go with a more nimble uh, starter file and everything on the, uh, on the edge, we moved that to uh, add-ons. So Easy Transit is a very good example. It, uh, it's set in our uh, starter file and now it has become something that we add only if we, if we need it. Uh, this comes with the cost of um, your integrity or your naming conventions. And for instance, script parameters. We have a whole system like maybe most of you are dealing with script parameters, but that requires a lot of custom functions, a lot of scripts, etc. Do you want uh, everything to be carried over with the add-on? Um, and so we tended to create add-ons with a, a very small uh, footprint and throw most of the error handling and specific parameter handling out. So we keep our add-ons as lightweight, as simple as possible. And we trust the fact that they have been thoroughly tested and be used in production for several years to let loose of some uh, error handling. Um, so it's like a balance between having a, a, a rigid framework to work with and having these uh, add-ons uh, without all this uh, error handling stuff, audit logging stuff, and custom functions in it. So that's the way we deal with that now. Um, but I'm curious to see how you change the way of work with the advent of, of add-ons. So with that, I'd like to conclude this short presentation. Lessons learned. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you want to join me later, uh, yeah, there's my email address in the list. Thank you.